lesson we're going to examine the relationships between monetary policy, the exchange rate, and the overall economy. Before you watch this video you want to make sure you're already familiar with money markets and how changes in monetary policy can affect interest rates in a country. You also want to be sure you've watched the video on floating exchange rates and you know the relationship between interest rates and a country's exchange rate. We're going to tie these two concepts together and conclude with an analysis of how changes in monetary policy will affect the overall economy's aggregate demand through not just changes in consumption and investment but also net exports due to the exchange rate effect of monetary policy. So the question we're going to address in this video is how does a change in the money supply either expansionary or contractionary monetary policy affect the exchange rate and aggregate demand? There's already an easy answer that those of you who have studied macroeconomics can provide to the second part of this question. You know that an expansionary monetary policy will have an expansionary effect in aggregate demand. In other words, AD will increase due to the impact that lower interest rates will have on investment and consumption. You know that a contractionary monetary policy is intended to have a contractionary effect in aggregate demand due to the fact that higher interest rates lead to less investment and consumption. But we're going to look more closely at how changes in interest rates can affect exchange rates and therefore have an effect not only on consumption and investment but also net exports. So we're going to walk through a scenario here. We've got the European money market showing the supply and demand for euros determined by the European Central Bank and we've got the Forex market for euros in the United States showing the dollar price of euros. Finally we've got the overall European economy showing aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Let's start with a scenario in which the European Central Bank increases the money supply through, for example, a bond purchasing program where the ECB increases the amount of liquid money in the economy, causing nominal interest rates to fall. Let's show the effect this first has on the money market. An increase in the supply of euros in the banking system to SM1 will cause the nominal interest rate in European banks to decrease to IR2 and the quantity demanded of money to increase to Q2. The first thing we want to know is how does this decrease in nominal interest rates affect the Forex market for euros in the United States? As we learned in a previous lesson on the determinants of exchange rates, we know that a decrease in European interest rates will make investments in European assets, including bonds and savings accounts and other interest-bearing assets, less attractive to American investors. Therefore, we can assume that the demand for euros will decrease due to the lower interest rate to D1. This decrease in the demand for euros is going to put downward pressure on the exchange rate of the euro in terms of dollars. So we can see right away that an expansionary monetary policy will cause the exchange rate of the euro to fall as American investors will find European assets less attractive. Now we can go down here and we can tell part of our story. An increase in the European money supply enacted by the European Central Bank will cause European interest rates to fall which will lead to a decrease in demand for euros and a decrease in the exchange rate. So the first thing we've shown is how an expansionary monetary policy leads to a fall in both the interest rate and the exchange rate. But now what effect do these have on aggregate demand? We can now actually tell two different stories. We can look first at the impact on consumption and investment of the lower interest rates. At the lower interest rates, consumption and investment become more attractive and savings becomes less attractive. So we'd expect to see C increase, consumption, and investment increase. These are both components of aggregate demand, so these both have an expansionary effect on aggregate demand in Europe. So aggregate demand should increase. But what about net exports? As the exchange rate falls, European goods will become more attractive to foreign consumers and foreign goods will become less attractive to European consumers. So while exports increase, imports into Europe should decrease, causing net exports, we call that XN, to increase. So now we can see that the expansionary monetary policy boosts not just consumption and investment in Europe, but also net exports. We can say that expansionary monetary policy has a positive net export effect on aggregate demand. The decrease in interest rates will cause not only consumption and investment to rise within the eurozone, but also net exports due to the impact that it has on the exchange rate. So we'll see aggregate demand increase, causing a short run expansion in Europe's output to Y1, and demand pull inflation in the eurozone. Price levels rise to PL2. 
Let's look at the opposite scenario now. What if the European Central Bank enacted a contractionary monetary policy and sold bonds on the open market, causing the supply of euros in the banking system to decrease to Q3 and SM2? The scarcity of funds available for loans in the banking system will lead banks to raise their interest rates to IR3. So down here we're telling a different story now. We're looking at what would happen if the ECB, the European Central Bank, were to decrease the supply of money. The first impact is higher interest rates in the Eurozone. How will this affect the demand or the supply of Euros in the Forex market in the United States? Whereas when lower interest rates cause demand for Euros to fall in the United States, higher interest rates should cause demand for Euros to rise due to the higher returns that American investors can get on their European investments now. The increase in demand for Euros should cause an appreciation of the Euro against the United States dollar to ER3. So let's go down and tell the story of the impact of contractionary monetary policy in the Eurozone on the European economy. The reduction in the money supply will drive up interest rates in Europe, which will cause the demand for Euros to rise, as Americans in this case will demand more investments in the European economy due to the higher rates of return. This increase in demand for the Euro will cause the Euro to appreciate to get stronger against the dollar. Now we can examine the effect of higher interest rates on aggregate demand in two ways. We can look at the impact that higher interest rates has on domestic consumption and domestic investment within the Eurozone. Clearly at higher interest rates, households will choose to save more and businesses will want to borrow less money for investment due to the higher borrowing costs. So consumption will decrease and investment will decrease. These both have a contractionary effect on aggregate demand, causing a decrease in aggregate demand in the Eurozone. What about the higher exchange rate of the euro against the dollar? The higher exchange rate will lead Europeans to import more. So imports will increase as foreign goods become cheaper to European consumers. At the same time, European goods have become less attractive to foreign consumers, especially those in America who find that the dollar buys less European output now. So Europe's exports will fall. Exports minus imports makes up net exports. So as exports fall and imports rise, we see net exports, the component of aggregate demand in Europe, decrease. This causes AD to fall in the Eurozone. Looking at our Eurozone ADAS diagram, we can show the contractionary effect of the decrease in the money supply and the corresponding appreciation of the Euro as a fall in Europe's aggregate demand to AD2. This causes a lower price level or disinflation in the Eurozone, maybe deflation, as prices fall to PL3 and a contraction in Europe's output as there is now a demand deficient recession and output falls to Y2. So how can we conclude this lesson? The original question we set out to answer was, how does a change in the money supply affect the exchange rate and aggregate demand? And our conclusion is that an expansionary monetary policy will lead to a depreciation of the currency. On the other hand, a contractionary monetary policy will lead to an appreciation of the currency. So what are the impacts of these facts on the relationship between monetary policy and aggregate demand? We have now shown that there is a positive net export effect of monetary policy. This means that if a central bank is hoping to boost aggregate demand, it can expect a decrease in interest rates to have both an impact on consumption and investment but also net exports. Not only do the two types of domestic spending increase, but foreign spending on the country's goods can be expected to rise as well. Therefore, the policy's objectives are reinforced by the impact that the policy has on the country's net exports. In the case of a contractionary monetary policy, the same is true. The intention of a contractionary monetary policy is to decrease both consumption and investment, but it just so happens that net exports will also be decreased, reinforcing the intended consequence of the contractionary policy. This is why we say there is a positive net export effect of monetary policy. No matter what it is the central bank is trying to achieve, the impact that the monetary policy has on net exports will help achieve that objective. So in this lesson we have shown the relationship between a country's monetary policy and its exchange rate. And we have established that monetary policy has a positive net export effect. If the goal is to boost aggregate demand, the impact of net exports will contribute to that increase in aggregate demand. If the goal is to decrease aggregate demand, the impact of net exports will also contribute to that decrease in aggregate demand.
we go. Mm -hmm. 